I want to read a verse or two here and try to preach to us tonight. The Lord will help us. <clears throat> the third epistle of John. The elder under the well-beloved Gaius, whom I love in the truth. Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prospers. For I rejoiced greatly when the brethren came and testified of the truth that is in thee, even as thou walkest in the truth. I have no greater joy than to hear that my children walk in truth. Beloved, thou, hast, thou doest faithfully whatsoever thou doest to the brethren and to strangers, which have borne witness of thy charity before the church, whom if thou bring forward on their journey after a godly sort, thou shalt do well. Amen. I want, to, want us to look tonight at, at verse number 2. Now, we've heard this verse probably used before, maybe not in the right way. I don't know. But look what it said again. Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as thy soul Prosper. Amen. Uh, there's nothing more valuable tonight than uh, good health. Good health. And uh, John is, uh, he is putting the blessing and the desire he's having upon his brother, whom he, in the first verse he said, talking about Gaius, he said, he, uh, My well unto the well beloved Gaius, whom I love in the truth. Uh, John loved this man and the gospel. He had he, his heart uh, went out to him, and he loved him. And uh, you know, when you love somebody, you want to see them prosper and be in health. But I want you to notice what John said to him. He said, "I would uh, have you." He said, "Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prospereth." Amen. Uh, you know, we're connected to a world uh, that is uh, uh, very diseased. Uh, it's a fallen race. There's never been a time when there's more sickness and more diseases that we can't find a cure for. In medicine, uh, 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 there's just uh, uh, untold discoveries all the time, but we still have terrible diseases that we can't find a cure for. Amen. But I believe that uh, uh, what John was telling this beloved friend of his, he said he was saying, "I want you to prosper, sure, and I want you to be in the health, but I want it according as thy soul prospereth." Praise God. Uh, you know, uh, it's one thing to be healthy in your body and prosper in this world, but that's not near as important tonight as having a healthy soul and a healthy spiritual man. Amen. I've seen a lot of folks that were, were maybe healthy in physical and uh, uh, healthy and uh, uh, prosperous in this natural whose soul, amen, was not healthy. Uh, I believe more than uh, physical diseases tonight, I believe we have spiritual sicknesses that are chronic and critical. Amen. Uh, where, uh, where do you go in this world to find peace and find the real Spirit of God and find a healthy spirit. Amen. Uh, you see, Adam and Eve fell in the garden, and not only did they become diseased in their body and become sick and begin to die, but they became diseased in their soul. Man became a sinner. Woman became a sinner. And they become unhealthy. Amen. Uh, you see, uh, uh, there are several things tonight as I preach about this healthy soul, uh, there's several things tonight that, uh, uh, you know, you notice about a man when he's not healthy. And uh, uh, one thing I, I know when, when uh, I get sick or others I've seen get sick, they lose their appetite and they don't care for food. Have you ever been there? Uh, i tell you what, when the folks around my house aren't eating, there's something bad wrong with them. Amen. They're, they got a health problem. And uh, just as the physical man, uh, when he gets sick, uh, uh, you see, a man can't live without eating. He, uh, 
why he can't make it without eating. That's why when they get so sick, they can't eat. Sister Patty, uh, uh, when Jones is sick, she can't eat. Uh, that's why they got to put her in the hospital. she got to have extra care. And they got to put the IVs on her. And eat her in a way that uh, uh, is not natural, so to speak. Uh, because they know if, if she don't eat, she's going to die. Amen. She's not going to be healthy. If you've got a problem tonight physically where you can't eat, Amen. Then you're not going to be a healthy human being. And can I say tonight, if there's something wrong in your spiritual life, Amen, that's causing you not to eat. Jesus, as Brother Billy said the other night, Jesus said, I am the bread of life. Uh, do you know the thing spiritually that you need to eat to keep alive? Amen. Uh, uh, you've got to stay alive spiritually. Amen. Uh, uh, Jesus said, uh, fear not, uh, human. we can do, he's going to die. He's going to turn white. And I'm, uh, all of us, uh, we'll get gray-headed. Uh, and uh, uh, we're going to get weak in our physical man. Uh, we're going to lose that strength in the physical, natural man. Uh, four score by reason of strength. Uh, and what happens after four score? But brother, I want to preach to you tonight. It's good to have a healthy body. Uh, but the odds are you're not going to stay healthy forever. But the thing that's most vital for you and I in this last hour when uh, Satan is trying to lay a snare for every soul. Uh, amen. And Satan is trying to afflict uh, and disease every spiritual man uh, and the soul of every human being. Whether uh, it's the soul that matters. Uh, amen. If you gain the whole world uh, and lose your soul, what does it profit? Uh, amen. Uh, what does it profit? Uh, if you're uh, but in your soul, you, you do not have a desire for food. Amen. Help me preach a little bit tonight. I found out as an early Christian, brother and sister, amen, that when you get saved, you've got to have an appetite. If you're a healthy Christian, you've got to have an appetite for the right food. Amen. One man put it this way. Amen. In, a, in the natural sense, he said you are what you eat. Amen. If you gain the whole world and lose your soul. Amen. You can tell when you're getting sick spiritually. It's when you don't have that craving for the Word of God like you used to have. Do you remember the night you got saved? said, I am the bread of life. He said, I am that manna from heaven. I am the thing that gives you strength. You've got to eat, brother and sister, if you stay alive spiritually. If your soul is healthy, this world don't need a church that's sick and diseased. This world needs a church that's healthy and they got vitality in their life. And brother, we'll not get that way and stay that way. Amen. Without a bind of Amen. Jesus said, come and dine. Brother, are we going to have to get up and make a move toward the table of God in order to stay alive? Praise God. I'm going to preach to you a little tonight on a healthy soul. I would have you prosper and be in health even as your soul does. Praise God. Oh, where can we find this food? Amen. Where do we find this food for the soul? Where do we find this thing? Hey, hey, if we're not saved, if we're not healthy in our soul and our spirit, if we become unhealthy and diseased, we'll become an apostate. Amen. We'll drift away from the truth. We'll drift away from the good fellowship with God. Do you remember the day you got saved? Do you remember how you craved the Lord? Amen. We become.
become unhealthy, it's a sure sign when we don't desire Jesus Christ anymore. You see, He's the food. He's the water. He is the thing that makes our life what it ought to be. Praise God. When we get so wrapped up in religion and then we forget about Him that the religion is built around. Amen. You become unhealthy when you don't have that desire to spend time with God in prayer. You don't have that desire for His house. Amen. That's where the Lord is. He said we're two or three are gathered together. so hard, amen, to hinder the services of God, because he knows that God has promised, brother, if we'd make our way to the house of God, amen, he would be there, amen, I tell you what, you might have said, I don't know, you might say, I don't know if I'll go or not, I wonder who's preaching, I wonder who's going to sing, but brother, that's never been a desire of mine, I've never said what well, so-and-so might be there, I don't believe I'll go, amen, they may not sing my song. I don't think I'll go. But brother, I've had one thing in mind when I come to God's house. And that's somewhere in between these doors. Amen. I might meet Jesus Christ. Amen. Because he promised. Amen. That where two or three are gathered, there I'll be. And what will make me healthy. Amen. Is if I come in contact with the bread of life. Whoa, hallelujah. Praise God. Have you ever noticed? And I know this is basic preaching, but I'm preaching on, you can tell, an unhealthy soul when they have no desire for God's house. They're unhealthy. Praise God. When you make a, a, a meal and set it out, amen, and your children come and the smell of it. I've been sick a few times where uh, t- this evening I was uh, sitting out in the swing and reading my Bible, and, and I, uh, my wife was uh, fixing spaghetti, and I smelled that spaghetti coming through the window. And man, my stomach went to uh, jumping. Them digestive juices went into action. My taste buds went to cheering. Rod, supper time. Hey man, and I, I wasn't sick. I'm healthy, I reckon. I had an appetite, Brother Steve. I, I want to ask you something. I know about all of us have that natural appetite. But when was the last time, hey man, it got close to church time? And you said, oh boy. Woo, huh? You can tell Brother Eddie's a healthy Christian tonight. Amen. Because he's on vacation. And he could have been out of town. And he might have even had to go out of his way to come back. Amen. To be here on Wednesday night prayer meeting. Oh, man. I didn't make it back on my vacation. Amen. But he made it back. That makes me feel good. Amen. To know that he's healthy. Amen. His, his blood pressure's checking out all right. Right. Uh, amen. Under an examination. Uh, uh, what, why do you know he's healthy? Well, he's still got an appetite uh, for the house of God. How about you? Uh, amen. The devil love for you. Uh, amen. To get in such a shape. Uh, amen. That you, say, you might even say, I'll just stay at the house. Uh, amen. Or come to church and just sit on your pew. Uh, but brother, I want to tell you something. Uh, if you're healthy in your soul, uh, amen, something's going to ring a bell with you. And you want to go to God's house. That's where you prayed through. That's where God met you at. That's where you got under conviction. Amen. And that's where you're fed. Whoa, going to stay with it just a little bit longer here. I'm going to try to preach to you. We need, we need healthy Christians. You see, this world is sick. Micah, the prophet said, said her wound is incurable. There's no soundness in her. This world is sick tonight. It's unhealthy. Amen. The church world in general is sick. Amen. And you can tell their desire. Amen. For Jesus, the power and the Spirit and the Word. 
Amen. It's not like it ought to be. We need revival. We need to be cured. We need to be healed. Amen. There you might find a lot of doctors physically. And I'll tell you what I'll do when I have to have one. I'll just call and see who's the cheapest. Amen. That might not be the best practice. Amen. That might get me in trouble sometime. But I usually call and ask the price. Amen. Of whatever it is I need. And I'll go to the cheapest. But brother, I'm going to tell you something. Amen. This soul sickness. Amen. There's only one doctor can take care of it. Amen. You don't have a lot of specialists. Amen. You don't have a lot of different alternatives. Brother, because there's only one doctor that knows how to take a black heart and wash it in red blood and make it as white as snow. There's only one doctor and he's the great physician. He told those Pharisees that were complaining to him about preaching to sinners. He said, he that is whole needs not a doctor, but he that is sick. He said, I came to be that physician. Brother, I want to tell you something. Physically, you may never get well. But brother, there's hope for your soul tonight. Amen. Ask God to heal you. Ask the Son of God to give you that desire back. To make you feel comfortable in the house of God again. And when you come, praise God, ask the Holy Ghost to give you, amen, that desire and that zeal that you had a while back or when you first got in. Brother, a healthy Christian is hungry and their appetite for God is as good as it ever was. We've got to have a hunger. Amen. We've got to have a hunger for the Word of God. Praise God. Oh, God help me. Praise the Lord. Amen. You can tell a spiritual soul when it's not healthy. It never reads its Bible. It talks during the preaching. Amen. It don't enjoy good preaching. It don't enjoy the truths from God's Word. You know when you can tell, friend, when your soul is starting to get diseased? It's when the preaching goes out. And you're getting miffed up. Huh? You're starting to get soul sick. You're starting to detest. Amen. I remember, uh, I, I've seen young as when I was little, if something I was made to eat, something I didn't like, I'd hold it in my mouth till they wasn't looking. And I'd spit it out. And I could always take it and push it around my plate. And make it look like I'd eat some of it, and all I'd done was just dispersed it in different corners of the plate. Huh? Come on now. You see, my appetite for peas wasn't much. My appetite for for hominy and grits and junk like that wasn't much. My appetite for greens wasn't much. Now, I liked some things, but my appetite for some things wasn't much. And when I didn't want it, I pushed it around. And I spit it out. And I'm going to tell you, when when you do that, you're liable to not be as healthy as what you could be. Amen. There's times that people get saved and, and they're pretty healthy. But then when the food is started to be put out on their plate, they lose their appetite because that old carnal man is resisting it and denying it. Amen. But I want to preach to you tonight. If you don't eat what's set before you, if you don't eat what God gives you to eat, amen, there'll come a time, amen, when you'll find your soul desiring to stay home. You'll find your heart, amen, has got faint within you, amen, and you're not as healthy as you used to be. Oh, church, what we need tonight is some healthy souls in the house of God. No, you cannot progress, amen, as a church when you're not healthy, amen, when there's too much disease. How do you tell, amen, what's your love for God's Word? Has it become a stink to you? Has the sound of it caused you to, amen, pull back? It might be your soul has become unhealthy. You see, you got to have a hunger for the Word. Amen. The Bible said there was going to come a famine in the land, a famine for hearing the Word. People are starving tonight. Amen. You can look at your newspapers. Amen. And see things. I looked in the paper today, and oh, it 
trouble me. Uh, amen. To see preachers uh, fighting one another. Amen. Preachers are uh, smearing one another. Amen. One for millions of dollars. Uh, oh, that's crazy. Uh, amen. I want to tell you something tonight. Uh, uh, there's a disease in this church world. Uh, amen. And we need to check ourselves. Uh, of a healthy man's appetite is good. Amen. Help me preach a little more. I would have you be in health and prosper even as your soul prospers. Amen. A healthy individual is awake and active and about his business. You see somebody that can't stay awake. Amen. Somebody that's not active or sits around all the time. You know right off there's a problem. Could I tell you that a Christian... Amen. That is not awake to what's going on in this world. Amen. There's something wrong in their soul. A Christian that's not active. Amen. Do you know if we don't confess the Lord, amen, openly before this world, amen, we'll lose our soul. We've got to confess Him as our Savior. Oh, God, help me. I'm preaching to us tonight. Amen. Jesus Christ has called us to serve as good soldiers of the cross. Ain't nobody has ever saved. Amen. And said, go back and sit down and don't let nobody know about it. But everybody that is saved, if you're healthy, amen, you're going to be up. And Adam, come on now. I wish you'd help me preach a little more tonight. Amen. I want to be a healthy Christian. Amen. Not sitting as the disciples did when Jesus went in the Garden of Gethsemane. Amen. But he said, could you not watch with me one hour? But brother, they fell asleep right there in the critical hour. I want to tell you that Jesus is soon to come. I'm going to preach to you tonight. His coming is nigh. Even at the door, I want to tell us that there's going to be a great falling away. Amen. And many will be deceived and the very elect if possible. I want to preach to you tonight. If you allow your soul to be afflicted, if you allow your soul to be diseased by this world, amen, then you're going to miss the signs of the time. And you're going to lose your soul if you don't watch and walk circumspectly. Not as fools, but as wise. Redeeming the time, for the days are evil. Oh, a sick heart and a sick church and a sick Christian. Amen. Is a, a tragedy. And we need Jesus Christ. Amen. To come as the Good Samaritan and take out of his bag the balm and the healing and ointments. Amen. And give us what we need. Amen. To cause us to stand upright. How are we going to help anybody else unless we get healed ourselves? I'll go on a little further. You tell a soul that's sick by they lose their strength, their vigor. Help me now. Oh, God. They lose their strength to stand, Sister Patty. And uh, uh, you can tell when folks one time had conviction, one time had vitality and vigor and had some principle and would stand. But then later on you notice they're not standing for what they used to, living what they used to live. What's wrong? They've lost their strength. And I want to tell you something. Amen. It's it's going to be harder and harder and harder to stand in this hour. Because the Bible said those things which can be shaken will be shaken. And only those things which cannot be shaken shall remain. If you're wondering when that shaking is going to take place, it's already taken place, friend. Amen. Paul admonished his followers, amen, to not be soon shaken in mind. He told them to not be driven about with every wind and doctrine. Do you know how you can keep from doing that? Amen. By being a healthy Christian. Amen. When you go against the tide, you 
go against the wind and you go against the storms, if you're not well, you will not make it. Are you hearing me? Amen. When when you do certain things, go into these dangerous places. Uh, amen. A lot of people aren't allowed to go if they if they if they've got any kind of illness. And could I tell you tonight, if you're not sound and whole as a Christian, when this shaking takes place and the wind begins to blow, you're not going to make it. Uh, amen. Cause we'll be shaken down. We'll be blowed off course. Uh, amen. Oh, there's a lot of sickness. Uh, uh, the people are not sound today. They have heart problems. Uh, amen. Hard, hard. Uh, the Bible said, because iniquity abound, the love of many wax cold. Uh, amen. There's many who have, a, have fainting spells. Uh, the Bible said, be not weary in well-doing, for you'll reap in due season if you faint not. Uh, there's so many diseases that will afflict Christians. Uh, amen. Blindness has hit a lot of people. Uh, people are deaf to the Word of God. Uh, they're lame, amen, to any uh, type of work for the Lord. Uh, but brother, I'll tell you, it don't have to be that way. Uh, amen. It does not have to be that way. Uh, you might try to doctor yourself. Amen. I've heard of people with their home remedies. My uh, Diana's granny told me about her neighbor that uh, uh, said she was one of the workingest women has ever seen. She had ten children and said she was a workingest woman that she'd ever seen. She wouldn't let none of her kids do nothing. Said she wouldn't let her husband help out, Holly. She worked in the field and worked in the house and done it all and said she was a strong woman and she had a knot come up on her arm. Amen. And many, some of them said, you better go check it out. It might be a, a cancer. And she said she she tried home remedies and different things and uh, wouldn't go. Uh, and uh, I said uh, the woman didn't live. Uh, uh, when she finally uh, was forced to go, uh, amen, the doctor checked her over just a little and said, Ma'am, uh, uh, it looks bad. Uh, I want you to go home and come back in a few days and we'll run the extensive tests. Uh, the woman went home uh, and she said, I ain't going back there. I've got too much work to do. I've got too many kids to take care of. I'll just put a little this and a little that on it. And Grandma said the woman died within a few weeks. She was already that far gone. And she thought she'd just take care of it herself. Well, she probably wouldn't have been no better off if she had a went back. Probably would have suffered many more things. But I want to tell you about this. A spiritual doctor, if you don't go to him, you say, well, I, I feel a little bitterness in my heart, but I believe I'll get over it after a while. If I, I'll just maybe uh, look at another way or maybe do another thing. But I want to tell you something. If you've got a problem in your heart tonight, uh, amen, you better not try no home remedies on it. Uh, and you better not call no quacks, uh, amen, and no voodoo doctors uh, or no acupuncture specialists. Uh, but there's only one doctor, amen, that can take care of sin uh, and take care of heart trouble uh, and can take care of the things that need to be done. Uh, and the best thing about it, brother, uh, is he's right within reach and he don't cost a thing and nobody that ever goes to him ever dies. Are you hearing me? Amen. No, no. They'll live forevermore. I'm talking about the great physician. Amen. He's been my doctor ever since I got saved and he's a keeper and he'll take you all the way. Oh, Dr. Jesus, are you on call tonight? If you've got a problem tonight, if you've got sin problems, if you've got an unhealthy soul, amen, you need to go to Dr. Jesus. And you need to listen to what he says. And you need to take his remedies. And you need to follow the instructions on what he gave you. Amen. He said, repent. Amen. Turn from your sins. Come weeping and crying. I like what one old man said. Amen. Talking about getting saved in the power of the blood. Amen. He said, even your tears have to be washed in the blood or they don't, it don't amount to nothing. 
You can come wet eyed and crying and snubbing unless you repent of your sins. The Bible said, Godless sorrow worketh repentance. Oh, God, I'm glad. You see, I had chronic sickness in my soul. In 1975, I was a chronic case. Amen. I looked like I was going to be a man of fatality. And just in time, amen, I went to Dr. Jesus' office. Amen. And I took the prescription. And I took it all, just like he said. Amen. And he brought me to life. Amen. Oh, are you healthy tonight? Do you love God's house? Do you love His Word? Do you love His people? Are you burden for the lost? Are you working for God? Do you have energy in your soul to do something for the Lord? Oh, it might be you need to make a trip. Amen. He'll make an office call. He'll make a house call if he needs to. Woo! Wherever you might be. Amen. He'll come to the mines. He'll come out on the job. He'll come into a coal truck. Amen. He'll make house calls. And he'll be the great physician. He will cleanse you. You got to repent. Are you here tonight and you're sick with sin? Are you here tonight in need of a doctor? I won't recommend the only sin doctor. His name is Jesus. Amen. Brother Eddie, come sing. Everybody bow your heads. Let's pray just to me. enough to be able to minister to somebody else. Lord, if they be a lost soul here tonight that is sick with sin, oh, that can find no remedies in this world, Lord, would you convict them of their sin tonight? Would you help them come to the doctor of all doctors, the great physician, and be cured of sin tonight? All ever head is bowed. Amen.